Rumi, the 13th century Persian poet who was born in the land that is now Afghanistan. Is there something in his words that speaks to you about the spirit of the Afghan people? I mean, everyone owns Rumi, I guess I'd say. I mean, that, that's going to get me in trouble with certain Afghan fans of Rumi who want to see him as, as an Afghan. I would say... Are they proud uh, of Rumi? Yeah, Do yeah, they yeah, see him yeah. as an Afghan? Do they... Yeah, I mean, so it, it, again, it depends. I mean, some, some people will be militant and say, you know, the Iranians can have him. He's ours. Um, but they're also say, you know, he's... I mean, you could say, I mean, again, he's like a Rorschach blot. I mean, he's, he's a Sufi. He's a Muslim. He's a Central Asian. Mm-hmm. He's Iranian. He's Afghan. He's a Turk. I'm trying to think of the analogy, but he's he's something special to everyone. So I guess I would I would not walk into that conversation and claim that he's <laughs> one or another. But it, but it's a cool thing. I mean, it's the um. But I'm glad you brought that up because that's a good way of seeing a seeing something that, that Afghans. I mean, for, for, we live in our country in Afghanistan and say, okay, Rumi's everyone. You know, Madonna helped make him famous in the United States. You know, for better for worse, mm-hmm. they used to sell stuff at Starbucks, and that's all complicated. Um, and embarrassing and his, his his translations are very much disputed where you have people be like there's some awful roomy translations and there are yeah. there are also a lot of speaking of the internet there are lots of uh fake roomy quotes yes you know like roomy said always be your best like yeah. no, they, 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 they didn't say that, that you know that was you know i mean that's kind of stuff like that but yeah. but no, the cool thing is like the um i mean i think you can read roomy as a religious thinker but you can also you know read roomy as a um you know, in an Islamic sense, but you can also read him as a kind of spiritualist, right? As someone who, or, or an ethicist or moralist. And so I think that's, I, I like the the lens of Rumi as a, a gateway to Afghan um, ecumenicism and, and cosmopolitanism. You know, the, the theme I keep emphasizing of, of meeting actual Afghans who are actually, you know, fluent in Russian, fluent in German, fluent in Turkish. They know Dari, they know Pashto. Um, they've gone to university or sometimes they haven't. And yet, I mean, they are, um, I like the category of the uh, popular intellectual, you know, the intellectual who isn't, isn't formally educated necessarily. Although, of course, that's represented too, especially increasingly now with this generation of going to university all over the world, you know, Stanford, MIT, everywhere. Um, Africans are well represented there. But just being, I don't know, having kind of worldly knowledge that is not limited to a province, to a village, to a hamlet. But it sometimes it is, but sometimes it's not uh, because of, Again, not because of some fairy tale story of curiosity wandering the globe out of, you know, some sense of of privilege, but out of necessity, out of survival, of, of having to adapt. And it's really um, extraordinary that I mean, also let me think about like professions of like, you know, ask ask an Afghan, you know, what does he or she do for a living, and what have they done in the past? I mean, the answer is one gets shoe salesmen, tax cab drivers, uh, surgeons, all in one guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, sounds, and that, I mean, that's not just Afghan, but yeah. that's you know that that's very common. But it's also Russia is the same. That's I right. I think it's right. whenever there's complexities to the economic system and the, that's right. A short term right. and the long term history of how the country right. develops, right. and it's basically the people figuring out their way around a mess of a country politically. Yeah. But a uh, beautiful flourishing culture and a, yeah. a humanity. Yeah. And that, that creates super interesting people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we can often see, okay, there's Taliban, there's war, there's yeah. uh, economic malfunction, there's harboring of terrorists, there's opium trade, all that kind of stuff. But there's yeah. humans there with deep yeah. intellectual right. lives. Uh, and uh, like, I, I love the movie Love Crimes and the same kind of... Uh, hopes, fears, and desire to love the the old Romeo and Juliet story. And right. I think Rumi to me represents that. Hmm. The wit, the intelligence, but also the just eloquent and just beautiful representation of humanity, of love. Some of the right. some of the best quotes about love are from him. Hmm. Half hmm. of them fake, right. half, <laughs> right. half of them right. real. But the best uh, ones are real, right? The best yeah. ones are real. Yeah. yeah. And the best ones are real. Uh Robert, this was an incredible yeah. conversation. Oh, thank you for having me. Th- thank you for Thanks the great. tour of Afghanistan and making me making us realize that um there's much more to this country than um what we may think. It's a it's a beautiful country and it's full of beautiful people.
you made me think about a lot of new things too. So it was definitely, <laughs> definitely great on my end too. So thank you so much.